thirty percent. Or maybe it's slightly lower. Because mm -hmm. I have many who are still going undergoing, yeah, still going and some are very young. They've just joined us, mm -hmm. yeah. But I, I think in time to come, almost all will hold mm -hmm. a master's. Is there a financial incentive to get a master's, or it doesn't? It doesn't. Um, there's no financial incentive, but there's a lot of financial support. Right. For you to get your master's, because <clears throat> you can do it part time, mm -hmm. and you only pay a nominal sum. You do it at the National Institute of Education, mm. and you can get your master's. And it's a good master's. But you'd have to do it after school. You couldn't do it during <clears throat> your school hours. If you wish to do it during school hours, then you apply for official uh, study leave. Mm -hmm. And some are given a postgraduate award to study overseas, some locally, and it's all fully paid for. Really? Mm -hmm. With salary, the tuition? Wow. And then uh, for teachers, after a certain number of years, I can't remember, it's like 10, is it? Six years. Six years. Six they can years. actually do their master's on study leave at half pay. Wow. So, yeah. Mm. That's a pretty good so deal. So we have a few who are now away doing yeah, this. That's right. yes. Yes. Hmm. So um, this is something that we're very blessed with. Yeah. We have a lot of funding for professional development. Mm -hmm. Significant amount of funding. Significant amount. Yes. And typically, th this is a big thing that I nobody's told me this, but you say you have a significant amount of money in professional development. How often do the t I, I think they have probably PLC something like that every school now is on a PLC okay so how often do your teachers actually meet or how much meeting how, how does the meeting time work here do they meet every day they meet once a week we are given uh, as part of the timetable allocation we're given uh, the teachers are given at least one period a week yes. which they call professional development time but in our case, we have blocked up the first period of the day um, as professional development time or departmental meeting times for them to discuss the lessons, to discuss um, practices. And you say one period, typically how long is one period? An hour. An hour. One hour. Okay. So that at minimum a week, they're going to get an hour mm -hmm. and probably more. More. It's more than an hour because... They have the department sharing, they have the professional learning time, then they have their level meetings. All these are capacity building sessions. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, again, I'm not going to quote you on this, but all that together, all those little things plus the PLC, what do you think that kind of adds up to in terms of hours? Could you see four hours a week? Easily. Easily. How many hours? I'm trying to, I know they have lecture hours here and Tutorial tutorials hours. yes and you use the same method here yes okay the jc's use a lecture tutorial system because oh. uh, when the jc model was first started which was well, almost 40 years ago mm -hmm. or more uh, it was to provide a transition from the secondary school to the universities mm -hmm. And at that time, the universities were using the lecture tutorial systems, and these mass lectures, and then you break out into tutorials. Mm -hmm. um, so we have been practicing that model, but we're also now moving into a seminar-style approach because uh, we find that that will be more engaging for the students, and it gives them a better platform to articulate their ideas. Okay, so what, what do you mean by seminar style? Are seminar you... style meaning a class of about 50 or 60. Okay. So they don't have lectures, but all the teaching will be done in the course of uh, having a discourse, group work, okay. uh, so the presentations. Le the lectures are how many kids right now, up to how many? It can stretch uh, from 120 to 200. 200. So one teacher is running the whole yes, show. Yes, that's right. Wow. In some other JCs, it can be as large as 500. 500 to one. Mm -hmm. See, in, one of the problems in the U.S., just for your information, is because of teacher union problems. You will never oh, be able to get something like that. We could never get something <laughs> like that. And a lot of people would want it, because mm -hmm. especially in the higher high school ages, it would work well. But because of union contracts and all that, says one to thirty-two, except for physical education and music, you. You should go to India. It's one to ninety. Yeah. Class. <laughs> well, I, I've been over to. I've been there. I've been to China and India. I, I, I know. I know what's going on over there. So, um, yeah, it's pretty incredible. China's almost there too. So, 
So, but basically you've found with these higher numbers though, especially at this age, it really doesn't matter, right? It does, it does. It does with uh, the current profile of students who are now more IT savvy, whose attention span can now be much shorter, right. thanks to Sesame Street and all these uh, gaming uh, computers and so on. Everything must be shifting fast. Mm -hmm. If you have to get them to sit an hour for a lecture, it does take its toll on them mm -hmm. because they need to be moving, they need to be talking. They get bored really quick. Yeah. So we are also reviewing whether we should have uh, the lecture tutorial system or we may want to have a blend where some of it should be in a more interactive classroom like the American model. Mm -hmm. Because our universities like... Uh, the management university borrows the model from Wharton. Mm -hmm. uh, our Singapore did, University yeah. of Technology and Design hold is a joint degree with MIT. Right. Then you have Yale and NUS. Mm -hmm. So part of the American model is also applied here. Right. Mm -hmm. But but what you're saying is if you go to the seminar model, then you're going to be dealing with about 60 kids mm -hmm. in a class. Mm -hmm. That's still a lot of kids. That's double of what we're doing in America. Yep. But but you think 60 is a, a good number to work with? I think that's what they use in the universities. Uh -huh. mm. And I, I think there's a certain number needed, a critical number, in order to have uh, good discussions, mm -hmm. uh, in-depth discussions. Otherwise, it can get quite tiring. Mm -hmm. for what I'm trying to figure out is about what, how many hours either lecture or tutorial a teacher would teach a week? contact hours with students. I'm not talking about homework time, right? That's that's something different. But actual class time hours does a teacher have to do per week, a typical teacher, average? Okay, there's a difference between the science and okay. the humanities. Let's say if it's a humanity teacher, most likely he or she will have to take uh, three classes of students and per week will be two lectures. So all together with two hours of lectures and on top of that will be another six to eight hours of tutorial. So eight, nine, that's about ten hours a week? Mm -hmm. For teaching time, just for the subject yeah. right. teaching. But on top of that, we do have our student development yeah. program, that kind of a contact time. Which is? Which is something in the area of um, character hours. development, which is around the one and a half hour. And then they will have other things that will yeah, professional, professional development. development and so, so, so we have 12 hours a week plus the professional development. Mm -hmm. So the actual teaching time in relative to what's going on in the world is fairly low. I mean, it's a good deal for teachers. Um, you must understand that this is just the contact time where okay. we do the lectures and tutorials. A lot of our teachers do a consultations. Oh, for helping the kids. Mm -hmm. So this could be maybe another. A lot more. It could it could happen in the, during our period zero. Right. Sometimes it's um, they are doing some consultation for special uh -huh. group. Uh, it could happen after the curriculum time. Right. So you think, on average, consultation could be six hours a week more. Um, it's easily yeah easily around six hours. Yeah. Right. So if you add up, it will therefore for about eighteen hours. Eighteen, 18 hours 18 with hours. everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's excluding marking and excluding the co-curricular co activity. Yes. Right. Yeah. So do all teachers have to be uh, involved in the co-curricular yes. activities? Yes. That's part of their what they need to do. Part of yeah. their workload. Work workload. Yeah. Yes. And so, and the co-curricular activities, do they get? Is that additional pay, or mm -hmm. that's just part of what they need to do? It's expected. Okay. And then, what would be some of the co-curricular activities they might be involved in? From games to dance, to performing arts, okay. to the clubs. So if they're, say, say that there's a dance club, they don't necessarily have to be a dance teacher. They're just no. supervising that. They'll have to look into the pastoral care of their dancers. Right. Yeah, to see that the coaches are also doing their job. Oh, so they're, they bring in, you guys bring in actual coaches too, like professional. So they're, they're supervising another teacher who's teach. Okay, I got if you. If you wish to have them performing at a high standard, yes, we need proper instructors. So you bring in professionals yes. with all of these yes. clubs, and yes. do the kids have to pay for this? Or is this part of the, these? We pay for it. We're part of the funds that we have from the ministry.
Yes. Oh, okay. So it's just part of the program. Yeah. So the students do pay a nominal sum sometimes, like if they have a performance. Right. And then they co-pay the attire, or some, if there is an enrichment program. Right. But uh, most of the funding comes from the school. And these co-curricular activities, how often do they have them here? Every day after if school? They are, if they are practicing for a competition, it could be as many times as three times, three times four times a week. Mm -hmm. yeah, two and hours at least. For example, do you have, what do you have here in music and art? Do you offer? We have uh, dance, mm -hmm. we have choir, mm -hmm. we have the guitar and song, we have the band. Okay. All the sports from hockey to tennis to soccer to rugby and so on. There's so many. There's so you so offer a lot of stuff here a for lot, the kids to do. Yes. And do most kids want us, do they have to stay around for these curricular activities? They, the, they have to participate in at least one. One. Yes. Okay. All right, let me...